Hello everyone. Today I will explain you about the concept of biodiversity conservation. As we know that biodiversity provides us different type of services directly and indirectly in our daily life. So biodiversity conservation is very important for all of us for the continuation of life on this earth. So first of all before starting the this topic biodiversity conservation its approaches we should know what are the objectives why we should want to conserve and protect our biodiversity what is the necessity so we have first point here to maintain ecological balance biodiversity conservation is necessary to maintain ecological balance second to allow continuation of natural processes for example cycling of matter here ecological balance means balance between number of producers consumers at different levels herbivores carnivores omnivores so to maintain ecological balance to allow continuation of natural processes and third is to safeguard the life supporting system life supporting system means ecosystem to protect our ecosystem natural balance so these are the objectives why we want to conserve and protect our biodiversity now let us have a look what are the approaches for biodiversity conservation so here we have two approaches for the biodiversity conservation first is in situ conservation approach and second is ex situ conservation approach to so try to understand what does it means in situ conservation means conservation of any species conservation of any species that may be plant species or that may be animal species in its natural habitat remember this in its natural habitat for example forest itself suppose we want to protect tiger in forest itself then that is the example of in situ biodiversity conservation on the other hand in ex situ conservation the conservation of any species in man made habitat or man made conditions so this is all about the approaches of biodiversity conservation now i will explain you about the in situ conservation of biodiversity in detail now in in situ biodiversity conservation we have three different approaches in india first is the concept of biosphere reserve second is the concept of national parks and third is the concept of wildlife sanctuaries in india we have 18 biosphere reserves remember this 104 national parks in different states and 551 wildlife sanctuaries so first i will tell you about the concept of biosphere reserve or you should know the difference between all these three how all these three approaches are different from each other so in biosphere reserve we generally try to conserve or protect whole ecosystem whole ecosystem means we are not trying to protect some specific species we are trying to protect whole ecosystem whole ecosystem means all these species of plants animals and with this some tribal population also so this is the concept of biosphere reserve in biosphere reserve the outer boundaries and you know, this this diagram figure shows you the concept of biosphere reserve here you can see that in this diagram biosphere reserve can be divided into three zones first zone first that is core part center part of the biosphere reserve this is known as core second zone this is buffer zone and third zone this is known as transition zone remember this core zone 
buffer zone and third is transition zone so here in this core zone no human entry is allowed remember this here in this core zone no human entry is allowed but in buffer zone entry is allowed but restricted tourism is allowed or some for research activity some people may enter here but with the permission so this is the buffer zone but in transition zone entry is allowed and human settlement small villages tribal communities are also residing in this zone and local activities agricultural activities collection of forest products is allowed in this zone so this is the concept of biosphere reserve zones now in india we have 18 biosphere reserve for example nanda devi biosphere reserve in uttarakhand nilgiri biosphere reserve the first remember this the first biosphere reserve of india is nilgiri biosphere reserve it is situated in transition boundary between karnataka tamil nadu and kerala three states so this is the first established in 1986 next example is gulf of mannar this is the largest biosphere reserve of india this is situated in between tamil nadu and sri lanka this is a marine biosphere reserve so this is all about the biosphere reserve concept of biosphere reserve now second i will explain you about the concept of national parks so as we know that in india we have 104 national parks here our target is to protect some specific species only we don't want to protect all the species we are trying to protect here some specific species for example tiger rhino elephant lion or some other species here human activities are totally restricted remember this here in biosphere reserve human activities are allowed but in national park no human activity is allowed human entrance is only permissible for tourism purpose only but with permission only first of all you get the permission from authorities then you can enter in a national park example of national park is jim corbett national park that is again in uttarakhand and it so here we have an example of national park that is jim corbett national park jim corbett national park was the first national park in india and established in 1936 remember this at that time the name was not jim corbett park but the name was helles national park theek hai now here as we know that tourism is allowed with the permission so this is the concept of national park here you should also remember this national park can be established in biosphere reserve because national park the size of national park is comparatively small in comparison to biosphere reserve so there may be the possibility that in a biosphere reserve there may be one or more national parks in core zone now third concept in in situ conservation is the concept of wildlife sanctuary hai na and we have in india 551 wildlife sanctuary still day here again in wildlife sanctuary we try to conserve some specific species only some specific species only but in wildlife sanctuary boundaries are not strictly bounded here in national park boundaries are closed here in wildlife sanctuary boundaries are not closed human activities are allowed for example cultivation agro activities but hunting killing shooting of wildlife is strictly prohibited in this area example is gana bird sanctuary that is in rajasthan and this sanctuary is famous for 
or focus on the conservation of more than 300 bird species including some migratory species also now second approach for the biodiversity conservation is ex situ biodiversity conservation here ex situ biodiversity conservation means artificial practices that has been adopted by different organizations government bodies to protect the biodiversity including species of plants and animals in this approach the protection is given to the endangered and rare species in a man made in a man made habitat for example zoological gardens botanical gardens gene banks seed banks tissue banks and other facilities are also there for example aquarium so here one by one i will explain you the concept of different ex situ biodiversity conservation approaches so here we have first approach that is seed bank so seed bank is the repository where we store the seeds of different plants and in india till date we have about 120 seed banks so here we can store seeds under cryopreservation cryopreservation means storage of any living material tissue seeds genes under minus 196 degree centigrade in liquid nitrogen so this is the concept of cryopreservation so cryopreservation technique is used both for seed bank and gene bank gene bank means the storage or the conservation of genetic material for example eggs sperms of different animals or tissues of different animals so this is also very specific task to protect and conserve the species here next concept is the concept of geological gardens the concept of geological garden is only for the animals in geological gardens we preserve protect conserve some specific type of animals where we provide food shelter medicine and breeding facilities so this is all about the geological gardens in india we have hundreds of geological gardens till date next concept in in situ biodi biodiversity conservation is the concept of botanical gardens the concept of botanical garden here we conserve and protect only plant species this is only for plants in india till date we have more than 140 botanical gardens remember this in this next concept is the concept of tissue bank this concept is adopted for the plants in which there is the lacking of seed producing feature ऐसे प्लांट्स जो सीड्स को प्रोड्यूस नहीं करते हैं ऐसे प्लांट्स को अगर हमें कंजर्व करना है प्रोटेक्ट करना है देन फॉर सच प्लांट्स वी हैव टिश्यू बैंक्स सो दिस इज अगेन आल्सो है क्रायो प्रिजर्वेशन व्हाय क्रायो प्रिजर्वेशन एंड द लास्ट अप्रोच इन दिस इज द अप्रोच ऑफ एक्वेरियम एक्वेरियम जनरली एडॉप्टेड फॉर द एक्वेटिक एनिमल्स पर्टिकुलरली different species of fish so this is all about the concept of ex situ biodiversity conservation now we have different advantages and disadvantages for both the approaches for in situ and on the other hand ex situ conservation in situ conservation approach is a natural approach and in which natural balance can be easily maintained but in ex situ conservation natural balance there is no balance maintenance of natural balance in ex situ biodiversity conservation we can only conserve some specific species only it is not possible to conserve all the natural species under the concept of ex situ biodiversity conservation so this is all about today's topic thank you